So in a nutshell, I really do not understand how any local game store can survive. And I, I say this with honesty and, and as someone who has opened a local game store and recently looked at a local game store. Again, I have looked at a local game store before. I am going to say this. Uh, my girlfriend is a finance and math major. We crunch the numbers, and it's really hard uh, if you just want to carry Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering is not what it used to be. Magic the Gathering used to be you buy a box for 90, you sell it for, or you buy a box for 85, 80, and you sell it for 100, you make $20, which is not bad margins. Um, it's not great margins, but there's actually a really good explanation why Magic Sealed has such low margins. It's because you're supposedly going to make higher margins on food and sleeves and, and all this stuff. So eventually it bounces out. When I buy something, my margins have to be 40%. I tell people straight up, you know, and, we, and people get upset and all this. But that's where my margins need to be. Because there's a lot of things, especially in singles, they can go up and down. They can go up and down. Um, it's not easy, right? It's 40% of what I think I can sell it to in my store. Online, the margins are even tighter than 40%. You know, it's very, it gets very tight very fast. If you are an online seller, but maybe if you're an online seller, you don't have a physical store, so you don't have rent. You have lower overhead, so you can deal with lower margins. But as a local game store, you cannot deal with low, uh, lower margins. Even just to hire an employee, a singular employee takes a lot of money. And this money isn't all that fun uh, to spend, especially because, oh, the employee thinks you're underpaying them and they want to get a new job. And <laughs> you're barely, you're not a Fortune 500 company, my friend. You're just you. You're a local game store, a small business owner. And many times when you start, maybe you just have one or two, you know, one or two uh, employees and that's it. You're not, a, you're not a huge company. So back to my initial assessment, kind of why I want to make this video. I want to make it like super duper clear um, a few things that I think people misunderstand. I think they misunderstand. Um... Your local game store is not making much money from Magic. In fact, it is very likely that it is losing money from Magic, especially if it does play events and so on. So it can mitigate some of this loss by not having table space and not holding play events or uh, trying to be a, you know, to Coral Sword is a good thing. They charge a lot of money for food. But you can get your margins elsewhere and then just hope that they're going to buy the box at break even and you can get your margins elsewhere. Uh, maybe in singles, singles have sometimes good margins, depends on what you buy them for. The market is just absolutely annihilated. I'm not buying, I, I've said this before, I am only buying reserve lists and I'm only buying cards that I myself just enjoy collecting. I no longer think of this as an investment, especially sealed product. I no longer think of sealed product as investable, ever investable. I right? kind of like Rudy with MetaZoo, investable. And I just don't see how I can never change that mind because a lot of it is the difficulty in selling is very, very tough. And I'm just surrounded by all this steel product that I could sell, but it, the effort wouldn't make it. You know, I have a day job. I own a marketing business. We make way more money doing marketing than if I put the whole team just selling cards. It, it wouldn't even come close. It wouldn't even come close, right? And that's with the actual steel product in hand. And we're probably some of the better distributors on contract. Yeah, let me just kind of uh, point this out to you in, in a uh, really, really bizarre but probably sensical way. Most people who open a game store, they're not doing it because they want to make a bunch of money or they want to be a millionaire. Most of them are living paycheck to paycheck. Many of them are not even at break even yet, meaning they took a loan, maybe a family loan per it is very difficult to survive off just Magic the Gathering. You, that's why back when I first came to Houston, or even when I was younger, there were some stores that were 90% Magic back in the, that day. Like we're talking about 2010, 2015. 
there were stores in Houston that did almost 90% magic. They might have a random Pokemon event, but they didn't do these new card games. No one did the Digimons or the One Piece. One Piece, obviously, a lot of these new card games did not exist until now because magic has given them the ability to exist. So if you understand what that means, it means One Piece has good margins, especially you know when people are paying overpriced over MSRP. Locana has better margins. Sorcery has better margins. MetaZoo had probably some of the best margins I've ever seen. Like you buy your boxes for like seventy or fifty dollars, and you sell them for eighty two hundred dollars, and you throw in like a free promo of yourself and a playmat of yourself. Like, that's pretty sick margins, guys. Like those are the margins that you owe me dream of at night. Those are the margins where you think about and you say, you know what? That's it's good to be a game owner, baby. Not magic. Magic, you're losing money. You are losing money. And there's not much you can stop. There's not much to stop the bloodshed. Because, um, because like every set is like this. Every set is you buy the set. Somebody undercuts you by 50 or like not 50, 15. I was going to say 15%. But somebody un undercuts you by 20, 25, 30% online. And suddenly all your customers are going to buy from that person. And then somebody undercuts them. And then somebody and then Amazon undercuts everybody. And then you're just like, well, okay, well, why did I carry this game? Like, cash flow. Like, you have to, you cannot hold these things forever. You have to sell them if you're a store. That's what I learned. And that's why I was not a very good store owner. Because I didn't I didn't sell them. I just kind of kept them. But you, you can't do that. You, you don't have infinite cash to pump into the system. I had another business, so it wasn't that bad for me personally. But I know many game store owners in Houston, and they're pumping their own cash. So they have part-time jobs as math teachers and, and school teachers. And, and they're pumping their own hard cash into their store. Because if they didn't pump their hard cash into their store, their store would go to zero. And this is, in my personal opinion... One of the, you know, it's one of the most ugly things that people don't talk about is when you run a business and you run it at a loss and it's just destroying your life. Not every store is profitable. And even if you're profitable, the next month you may not be. And you didn't do anything different. Actually, next like you were expecting next month to grow and then you plummet. It is all about the social media. As I found out later on, it's all about the social media, right? The influencers and all this shit. Like if you have a YouTube channel and you can sell stuff at a reasonable price to your subscribers, it can work, right? It can work. Not on whatnot, but it can work on other platforms like YouTube. If you don't have that audience and you don't have that online audience to drive into your store physically or online sales, right? Then you're done because you're competing with people who do. The margin that every single retailer tries to get is at least 40%. The margin that Magic the Gathering gives its local game store is like minus like 40%. You can see that eventually the game stores are going to wake up and say, well, guys, we're losing money here. Uh, Taco Bell man is stealing all of our tacos. Let's get out. And that's what they said to Rudy. They, Rudy was undercutting them in flesh and blood. The local game store <laughs> screenshot. This is according to Rudy, by the way. And sent it to the Legend Studio. And then the Legend Studio said, Rudy, stop that. Rudy, please stop. And he had to stop. And then had to delete his video. Because he was upset at them. Well, Taco Bell man ain't eating that more tacos no more. 